your family, your health, our passion. This is Family Practice with Dr. Jeffrey Fox, sponsored by Family Practice Associates of Lexington, PSC. Visit us at fpalex.com and like us on Facebook. Welcome to this episode of Family Practice. How do you know if you're sick enough to go to the emergency room? We've got an ER doctor here to help us decide. Chronic care management and remote patient monitoring. It might be helpful to you or a family member. And with wintertime here, slick sidewalks, falls lead to fractures, we've got an orthopedic surgeon. All that and the refuge clinic is here. My first guest to start us off is Dr. Mark Spanier, an emergency room physician at Baptist Health. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Well, so tell me, in the emergency room, you probably see a little of everything. Give me some examples. Absolutely. We, we see things from minor emergencies to full-blown heart attacks, cardiac arrests, and, uh, and the such. Uh, the majority of our patients are more in the, uh, at least at Baptist uh, Lexington, we see a lot of chest pain patients, a lot of abdominal pain patients, stroke symptoms. Those are some of our more common uh, underlying causes for coming to the emergency department. So, so how do you know wh when is an emergency room? Are there some things that are definitely emergencies? So there, there are obvious emergencies where any lay person would would be able to tell if someone grabs their chest and they fall to the ground and they're not moving again, you know that's a true emergency and they need to be in the emergency department. Uh, but a lot of it is subjective. It's, it's difficult to say if you have any one symptom that uh, you, you absolutely need to be in the emergency department. But if you have severe abdominal pain, chest pain, if you have any signs of a stroke, and some of the more obvious signs of a stroke or more classic signs of a stroke are uh, facial droop, arm weakness on one side or speech problems. And so if you have one of those three things going on, if suddenly you develop one of those three things, that's really the time to go to the emergency department to activate 911. Don't wait, uh, get to the hospital. Well now, those are obviously emergency, emergencies, but there are sometimes things that end up, I'm assuming end up in your emergency room and you think, well maybe they don't need to be here. Can you maybe help us with that a little bit? And there again, it's, it's difficult to, to make that decision for patients. So anytime you feel like you're having a medical emergency, you feel like your life is potentially at risk, it's time to come to the emergency department. But if you've had, say, abdominal pain or you know, recurrent abdominal pain, recurrent headaches going on for months, the emergency department's not the best time to come unless you have a real big change in those chronic conditions. Uh, if all of a sudden your headache just ramps up and it's, it's out the roof, it may be time to come to the emergency department. If you feel like you have time, I think that's a, a good time to call your primary care provider, see what they recommend. Uh, but if you're in doubt, it's better to come than to, to stay at home and, and worry about it. Well then sometimes when you get to the emergency room it takes a long time. Everybody wants to know why is it taking so long? Why does it cost so much? Can you shed any light on that for us? And that's a great question and a lot of people get frustrated when they're in the emergency department but we base everything on acuity of condition. Meaning if you come in the door and you're the sickest patient in our emergency department our resources are going to go to you. So we're going to take care of you within seconds. We're going to devote a lot of time and energy to saving your life. If you come in and you have uh, a minor sprained ankle or, or something that's not a major emergency, you're going to end up waiting for, for longer. And it depends on the time of day that you come in. Uh, but in general, if, if you do come in with any condition, the earlier you come in in the day, the slower we are. And this is true for every emergency department uh, across the nation. So if, uh, if you've been thinking about it all night long, should I go to the emergency department or not? If it hits morning, come on in. Don't, don't wait until five o'clock. And that's what a lot of people do. They wait until the end of the day and then everybody shows up at the same time and we just don't have enough beds. We don't have enough nurses. Uh, we don't have enough x-ray machines and labs. So it takes longer as the, as the day progresses and the, and the volume of patients increases. Okay, real quickly, COVID. You don't wanna to come to 
uh, the emergency room just for a COVID test, but maybe if you're sick with COVID. Right, right. And in, in general, the cutoff that we like to see people come in with is if your oxygen level drops to 94% or less, and that's with a home monitor, which anyone can purchase at a Walgreens or any, any uh, pharmacy, uh, one of these pulse oximeters. So if you've tested yourself, you know that you're, that you're positive, you're having some difficulty breathing or cough, and you see your oxygen level slowly go down and it's steadily uh, down to 94% or below, we think it's time for you to come to the emergency department for evaluation. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you for that great information. My pleasure. Thanks to Baptist Health Emergency Room also. We'll be right back.